Today we have the 2021 Mercedes GLB 250 and I've got five things that I like and five things that I don't like coming right up. Now I want you to know I have a full detailed review and a night video showing off the lights of this Mercedes. If you want to check those out, I'll put the link to those in the description below if you want to know more. Now starting with my dislikes, in no particular order, dislike number one is something that is something you might not even think about to check if you're testing a car out. But let me show you. So you've got the standard sun visor, right, pops out. And most of the time, the visor itself can move or it's got a little sliding piece. This does neither. Is that not weird? Like, am I missing something? But that is a complaint to me because there's been several times where this does not block the sun where I want it to. And in a Mercedes. Now, one other little complaint is with the road noise. Get up to speed. And this is a rougher textured road. And you can probably hear that road noise coming in. I mean, it's not terrible. You can have a conversation in here, but there's no laminated glass over here, which is kind of surprising. That could help suppress wind noise because at interstate speeds, there is some wind noise that comes through over there. For a Mercedes, even though it's a lower end Mercedes, I think that we need some better sound suppression in here. I would probably say that my biggest complaint with driving this is this dual clutch transmission. And when you're getting on it, like you've seen, it does, it's fairly quick and responsive, but there's sometimes where it just hunts for gears, especially right when you're taking off from a low speed or slowing down as I slow down, it's almost like a clunk from fourth to third, clunk from third to second. And then especially second to first when you're coming to a stop and then right when you're taking off. And dual clutches kind of have a tendency to do that kind of stuff and just behave like that, but I would not, I just don't like that in a, a luxury vehicle like this, especially not a performance luxury vehicle. Now my fourth dislike is the fact that there are not very many standard features on here. I mean, sure, there's still a lot of standard features, but some things that you might expect in a Mercedes, like a sunroof, it's not standard, you have to pay extra for that. A seven inch screen is standard instead of the big 10 and quarter inch screen that we get. A seven inch screen is pretty small nowadays, even in mainstream cars. These seats aren't heated standard either, at least not in the US. They're not leather either, so you have to pay a lot for different options on a lot of different areas of this vehicle if you really wanna dress it up, and then it gets pretty expensive. So I'd like to see more features standard, but that's kind of what you get for an entry level, lower price point Mercedes. Now my dislike number five is the fact that driver assist features are becoming more and more popular, like radar based cruise control, a lane keeping system, things like that. And you have to spend $1,700 plus get the multimedia package and the premium package in order to get those on this Mercedes. Those are standard on a Toyota Corolla. Now obviously it's nothing like this, but I'm just really surprised that you have to pay that much extra to get those very popular features on a vehicle like this. Now my likes in no particular order, like number one is this upgraded 10 and a quarter inch digital display. So standard you'll get a seven inch display, but you can get this 10 and a quarter inch digital display that gives you so much information on here and it's completely customizable. This middle information, you can have whatever you want. You go over to the left, you can move through all sorts of different stuff over here. So you can have standard gauges, you can have your trip computer stuff, you can go to the right gauge and even change a bunch of stuff in there too. So this is really cool. Plus, if you don't want it to look like that, I mean, you can have just your radio information on here. You can have your navigation on here. You can see all your driver assistant stuff on here. I mean, it's really cool just how detailed and the fact that you can do a full screen on here, that is really neat. Now my like number two is the fact that the Mercedes is so customizable. For example, we have the AMG line styling. So you can get AMG styling without having to pay the AMG premium for the performance. Plus the interior is so customizable with colors and trim pieces. So I like the customization that you can get. My third like is the fact that at this price point, you can get this as a seven passenger vehicle. So you can get a two person third row in the way back. Now obviously it's gonna be tight, but that might be a necessity for some people. If you want this nameplate and you want this size of a vehicle at this price point, you can still get seven passengers. Now my fourth like is the fact that we have a voice assistant in here. It's pretty advanced too. So for example, hey Mercedes. How can I help? I'm cold. 
I'm increasing the temperature on the front passenger side to 75 degrees. I don't know why I was a passenger side, but how about this? Hey, Mercedes. Hey, Mercedes. I need a coffee. Here are several coffee shops. And she gives me directions. So obviously that little snippet of me talking to her did not work very well, like it should, but you're supposed to be able to talk in a natural voice. There's a lot of things she can do. She can even turn on your heated seats if you want. She can change the ambient lighting colors and she's gonna learn as she goes. So it's supposed to be a learning system that's supposed to be above and better than many of the other brands out there. Now, another one of my likes is the fact that we've got some really awesome ambient lighting in here. So you've got 64 different color options or like totally custom color options if you want to go through here. And there's ambient lighting everywhere. Let me just give you a quick glance. Even the, even the vents have lights inside of them. Check this out. If I like turn the heat up, the vents turn red. That's pretty cool. I mean, and turn blue if you turn it down. You've got ambient lighting next to you all around here. So overall, it's just a really, really nice presence at night. Driver, passenger, even the back seat. It's just a nice place to be. And one little bonus is that you actually have a reading light. So first of all, you can turn everything on nice and bright in here. Of course, that's standard, but you turn that off. And then if you don't want it to be so bright, you have a reading light. Press that and a light comes from the mirror to actually illuminate next to you, even the driver's side. Or you have a button to where you can turn on the rear lights. So you can turn on the back seat lights. For me with a baby, got a little car seat back there. My wife is back there sometimes with her and it's just nice to be able to turn those on at the push of a button from the front. So after spending a week with this Mercedes, those were just five likes and five dislikes. Obviously, nothing major, still a pretty cool vehicle. And like I said, if you wanna learn more about it, be sure to find the full review in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.